Hi everyone! Welcome to Great Web 2.0 Tools to Improve Learning. My name is Bethany Bovard and I'll be your facilitator for this workshop. Like many of you, I've been using the web for teaching and learning for quite a while. My journey began in 1997 when I worked on a team to develop some interactive online content for 6th through 12th graders. I enjoyed that work a lot. But things really got interesting about 10 years ago when I started incorporating Web 2.0 into my courses. It is my hope, as you and I explore various Web 2.0 tools in this workshop, that you'll become just as excited as I am about the possibilities these tools have for teaching and learning. Note, I pay close attention to the help forum and respond within 24 hours. However, if you need to get in touch with me more quickly than that, you can email me at bbovard at sloanconsortium.org, Skype me at bbovard, or call me on my cell at 256-724-2949. Please note, I'm on Central Time, and I only accept calls between the hours of noon and 10 p.m. Central. I'd like to begin this presentation with a quick introduction to some of the key concepts we'll be exploring in this workshop. First, you might be wondering, what is Web 2.0? If you do a quick Google search, you'll find many definitions. These fairly technical definitions usually include concepts like rich internet applications and service-oriented architecture and other even geekier terms. I promise that you won't really have to learn those things in this workshop. What you will need to know is that the term Web 2.0 denotes online services that allow you to both read and write to the web easily. Blogs and wikis are two excellent examples of this. Web 2.0 services typically also have easy ways to combine or mash up data from different online services. Pulling YouTube content into a voice thread is but one example of this. Finally, the term Web 2.0 has come to be practically synonymous with the social web because these services often allow you to connect with others similar to what Twitter does. And don't worry if the terms blogs, wikis, voice thread, YouTube, or Twitter made you think, what? I promise you'll be more than comfortable with those terms by the time you complete this workshop. There are hundreds of Web 2.0 tools or services available, and we couldn't possibly cover them all in a year, let alone 10 days. But I have selected five. VoiceThread, Digo, Screencast-O-Matic, Blogger, and PBWorks that provide multiple uses for teaching and learning in your courses. These five each represent a certain class of tools available and also give you a good idea of the wide variety of options available to you. Of course, this is the second time in this presentation that I've mentioned some of these tools and you may still be wondering what I'm talking about. So, let me give you a quick overview of each of these five. VoiceThread, for example, is what I like to call a Presentation Plus tool because it allows those watching the presentation to interact with it by adding text, audio, and video comments or questions. Digo, an example of the social bookmarking tools, provides you and your students with options for bookmarking and sharing web content, plus a whole lot more. My personal favorite, Screencast-O-Matic, is an online service that allows you to capture video of whatever is happening on your desktop and then stream it to the web for your students. Blogger, our blog tool, is basically a web page with entries easily added using a web form. It also has plenty of options of pulling in content from many other online Web 2.0 services. Finally, our wiki example is PBWorks. This Web 2.0 service lets you create entire websites as easily as typing a set of documents. As you can tell from just this brief overview, Web 2.0 has plenty to offer. 
Even with the many options we just discussed, you're probably wondering why you might want to include these tools in your courses. Research shows that interaction, engagement, and plenty of opportunities for demonstrating learning and receiving feedback are key to student satisfaction and positive learning outcomes. While it is certainly possible to achieve these things without Web 2.0 tools, including them in your courses can definitely enhance the possibility of achieving them in fun and interesting ways. Web 2.0 tools include plenty of options for students to interact with you, each other, and the content. They also tend to be new or novel in the online class, and novel things tend to increase engagement. Finally, because they are so easy to use, students find them particularly useful for demonstrating learning and faculty find them just as easy to use for providing feedback. In the core readings for this workshop, you'll e learn even more about the nature of Web 2.0 tools and their potential benefits for your courses. Now that you know some of the key concepts covered in this workshop, Let's turn our attention to the workshop structure, requirements, grading, and so on. Our workshops have two options. The non-graded option is for those who don't want or need to receive a certificate of completion. With this option, you can participate as much or little as your professional needs and personal desires dictate. The graded option, which leads to a certificate of completion, has specific learning objectives and supporting graded activities that must be completed satisfactorily. You do not have to notify us which option you choose. If you complete the graded activities satisfactorily, you will be able to download your certificate. Please note, you can't decide to take the workshop for a certificate after the workshop is over. In this workshop, we'll be working together to explore several classes of Web 2.0 tools or services, explain how to use Web 2.0 tools or services to improve engagement and learning outcomes, and evaluate Web 2.0 tools or services along a continuum of criteria. We'll accomplish this through a series of activities that, when completed, will provide you with the knowledge and skills to successfully use some Web 2.0 tools in your courses. Along with core readings and discussions, there are also tutorials and hands-on explorations for each of the tools I previously mentioned. These activities are structured to give you a good overview of the concepts and skills necessary for effective use of Web 2.0 in your courses. If you are taking this workshop for a certificate of completion, you will need to complete the core readings and complete a minimum of two of the possible hands-on explorations. These explorations include trying out the technology and discussing that technology with others in the workshop. If you are not taking the workshop for a certificate, you can choose to participate in as few or many of the activities as you need to satisfy your personal and professional goals. There are four possible hands-on exploration activities and you must complete two of them to receive a certificate of completion in this workshop. The hands-on explorations are graded SAT unsat. To achieve a satisfactory grade, you simply need to complete the activity as directed. My only expectations are that you will practice with the tools, share your experiences of that practice with others in the discussion forums, and answer the questions posted there. As long as you do that, you'll be sure to get a satisfactory grade. If for some reason your discussion post doesn't address all the questions, I'll respond and ask for clarification on certain items that, when you answer, will help you achieve that satisfactory grade. Please note that if you are taking this workshop for a certificate of completion, you have until 5 p.m. Eastern Time, the last day of the workshop, to complete the graded activities. I will then have the grades posted within one week of their completion so you can download your certificate. Each hands-on exploration activity follows a similar pattern to the activity shown here. Typically, it begins with some sort of video tutorial to show you how to use the tool. After watching the video or videos, you'll then create something using the tool. Finally, you'll post a link to your creation in the associated discussion forum 
and answer the questions located in that forum. By watching the tutorials, practicing with the tool, and then framing that practice within the context of your readings on Core Web 2.0 literacies and evaluating technologies through discussions with others in the workshop, you will be well on your way to meeting the stated objectives of this workshop. For those of you taking this workshop for a certificate of completion, you will have to complete a minimum of two of this type of activity. Each block of the workshop lists recommended dates for participating in each of the activities. Of course, you can always start activities early. For example, even though introductions technically go through the first weekend, many people opt to start doing their readings and hands-on explorations that first weekend as well. My personal recommendation is that you spend the first few days introducing yourself and reviewing the core readings. Then, on that first weekend, you take time to briefly check out each of the tools to see which two, at a minimum, you'd like to focus on. Once you've decided which two tools you plan to focus on, you can then use the rest of your workshop time to really practice with your chosen tools and think about answers to the questions in the forums. Thank you for your time and attention during this presentation. I'm looking forward to interacting with you in this workshop, and I wish you joy and success in all your learning endeavors.